Hey guys, welcome to Redemption by the Game, and this is Alex coming from the Scroots Invitational. Uh, scroll around the block in Moravia, New York. It's my first Redemption tournament in 10 years, so uh, I guess I'm really back. Just thought we'd be able to go over my Scroots deck real quick. It's about 6.45 in the morning, so I woke up a little bit early. I figured I'd kind of bang this out real quick. Uh, so you guys get some pre-tournament thoughts, uh, and I can maybe get some post-tournament thoughts as well. So let's get started. All right. So we're gonna figure, I'm gonna zoom out big real quick. So I'm playing a silver, green, and then on offense, and then I am playing basically Romans with a couple magician splash uh, in there as well. So let's kind of go through that. Uh, we'll start with the Lost Souls. Uh, so you see, I'm playing the Hopper. Uh, it's pretty standard, I think, in most Scrooge decks at this point. Uh, I've got the CBP soul, which is just very good in the meta that's full of five by numbers. I've got the Punisher soul. Again, there's going to be a lot of multi brigade stuff going on in Scrooge typically. I got Wanderer to wander to some other protecting souls, which, like, for, for example, I have the NT only in the female, but uh, I like to wander back because my entire uh, offense, excuse me, is pretty much OT and male. Uh, I have the brand new Lost Souls card, which is a super busted way to generate souls for my deck uh this deck is a tempo deck and what i mean by that is like is my goal is to make a rescue attempt every turn burn the opponent out of resources uh and then i have a, at least one way to kind of reset the tempo uh in my favor if necessary i also have the new color guard so this is an updated and better version of the old color guard because it doesn't require a sight only requires that evil characters share a brigade to protect evil humans and territory from harm. Uh, so that's harm from my, from me, harm from my opponent. Uh, just bulletproofs them in the territory, which is really nice, especially since there's very few ways to negate souls in the Scoots format. Very few. Uh, so you'll notice I also have Pot of Mana. Uh, I have some more artifacts, but I have them kind of spread out throughout the deck uh, based on where they're thematically linked. Pot of Mana is the only one without a thematic link. Uh, restrict all players from controlling more than one character in the field of battle. Uh, this is a really hard fight by the numbers banding counter. Uh, it's also a really great counter for just some of the silly banding that can happen because of the way Scrooge's cards interact. Most decks are going to have some type of banding. It also kind of superpowers some of the fight by the number characters like TSA and Captain because uh, cannot be prevented or cannot be negated banding is usually one of the easiest ways to get around them. Or in Captain's case, it, he allows banding from the beginning. Uh, so kind of blocking that with Pot of Mana can create some free souls. Um, uh, so now let's talk about the offense. Uh, it's going to look a little bit weird, probably. Jay Chambers said, I, I build decks like I haven't played in 10 years, and I'm just building things that I would have built in 2014, which is probably fair. Uh, so the first thing you'll notice is I've got my Angel Under the Oak and my Moses with exactly zero gold support. Uh, this combo is just too good not to play. Uh, and so since I was already playing Silver, I felt there was no reason not to be playing Angel Under the Oak and Moses. Uh, now, alongside that, I've got essentially Standalone Strong Angel, Standalone Captain of the Host. I mentioned their interaction with Pot of Mana, which is really nice. But again, these are just good heroes to begin with. Uh, kind of the interesting turn that my deck is going to take is I'm playing um, Hidden Treasures, new version. So if you control an OT Green Prophet, you may look at a hand. If your Green Prophet attacks, you may discard an evil enhancement from deck. Uh, I really liked that it, that that card got rid of the restriction of needing to attack with a lone Prophet, so I decided to try to abuse it a little bit. Uh, and so there's some interactions in my deck that are kind of built around that. Obviously, I've talked on some other videos about how good looking at a hand is. So I, I also love that addition of the ability. Um, probably the most interesting interaction I have is I have Daniel who can band to Gabriel. So if Hidden Treasures is active, I could be discarding two evil enhancements, which if I can execute that once per game in most Scrooge decks, that's probably all of their battle winners if they're in the deck. Uh, so it's really going to weaken their defense, and it's going to give me a lot more options for my future rescue attempts of how to get through. Uh, as far as other heroes, I have I also have Michael. Uh, again, it's just another banding option for Daniel. Uh, makes the enhancements cannot be negated. Pretty good. Uh, and then I have Seraph with a live coal and Cherubim. Uh, so we'll start with Seraph with live coal. Uh, you may discard an evil card in your territory to search, dis 
deck or discard pile for Isaiah 6 enhancement. May ban to Isaiah, cannot be negated. Uh, obviously, cannot be negated. Banding is always good. And then um, it's a counter to some place enhancements or to like A bomb if that were to be a thing. But it's more importantly, it's also just a, a way to recur enhancements from my discard pile, uh, particularly Live Cole or Isaiah's Call. And that's really helpful because I'm also playing I Am Holding. Upon activation, holder may discard a good card from hand to make an opponent discard an evil card from hand. If opponent has no evil cards, opponent must reveal a hand. Again, uh, this is just a way to kind of wring the opponent resources. So if I have punished them in their deck, I could follow that up by punishing uh, their hand as well to clean out some evil. And then with Seraph at a live, with, with a live coal, and then live coal, um, I also have a way to recur a discard. So that way the discard is, is kind of free. Obviously that's at the cost of a evil enhancement, or excuse me, an evil card in territory. Uh, but oftentimes that trade is going to be pretty beneficial for me. Uh, as far as green heroes, so I've got New David. Uh, may ban to an OT green profit or look at the top seven cards of deck. Take one good card. Uh, this is a busted ability. Just being able to, to search my deck for in the top seven and take a good card, which could be a dominant, is real busted. Uh, I think it's really good. Uh, and the fact that he also has a banding option alongside that is really nice. So he can help create a long banding chain if necessary. Uh, I've got Isaiah, so I can protect the Perturbable Kings from opponents, search discard pile for a good Isaiah card, and place it on the deck to draw X. Uh, good Isaiah cards can't be negated. Again, this is just another way to recur either Isaiah's Call or Live Coal and fuel I Am Holy. Uh, with Isaiah's Call on Isaiah, which, again, Isaiah's Call searches the deck or discard for Isaiah and put him in play, place on Isaiah. While in battle, Isaiah has sight access and negates lost souls, sights, and evil characters. Uh, so again, it just kind of makes him like a pseudo fight by numbers guy. Makes him get uh, get through some chump blocks like Uzza. Uh, just a lot of benefits to that. And then finally, I have the Watchman. Draw two or exchange this card with an OT green human profit from deck or discard pile. Uh, excuse me, from discard pile or reserve. So I, can th I think of the Watchman as kind of just uh, my jack of all trades. So... Uh, there's not a lot of ways to access reserve in Roots, so having an option that's essentially like eight different heroes, nine different heroes, plus the potential to, to recur from discard is really good. Uh, I should mention, I'm playing Cherubim for a similar reason. Uh, it, I'm playing the new version because it can top deck a good Ezekiel card from discard, uh, which, which uh, has some potential to help in the future. Um... As far as enhancements, so I, we can start over here. So I've got wheel within a wheel to get to search for an angel. I've got live coal to discard either myself or to, to use to discard an evil enhancement or curse. I've got Isaiah's call uh, as we go on over. And then striking here is my one silver enhancement. Interrupt the battle and discard a male human evil character. Again, that's a pretty standard battle winner in most screwed decks that are playing silver. Uh, I've got two bears and swords into to plowshares for my profits. But then I've got Everyone's favorite card, A New Beginning. I'm not going to try to, per to read the ability because the ability isn't even the ability anymore. It's been eroded like 100 times. Uh, but basically, if you'll notice, I have 12 heroes here. I also have some ways to search heroes. So so I actually have 14 ways to a hero in this deck. Uh, so when I play A New Beginning and I get essentially 11 cards to get a hero, I'm certainly going to get a hero. And a lot of my heroes are really great by themselves or at least get more resources, even if they're by themselves. So I call this a tempo deck because there shouldn't ever be a turn that I'm not making a rescue attempt. Uh, and I have ways to kind of reset someone's hard work to build their territory. Additionally, this is going to interact with my color guard soul, where if I have this soul out while I play a new beginning, my defense is actually not going to get shuffled, uh, which is a, a really good way to just dissuade people from uh, attacking that first turn afterwards. They're going to hopefully see a, a little bit of a build defense. Uh, so I would call this offense, it's a little bit about attrition, which is the, probably my biggest concern with it. It's not necessarily a direct overpowering offense, uh, but Scrooge is kind of a different meta where... There's not a lot of heavily played defense. Uh, it's a lot of chump. It's a lot of um, kind of like compact defenses. 
And, you know, whenever I was trying to build for this event, I was trying to build a good defense first. If I was building good defense, I just didn't have space for an offense that made sense. So I think this is I think this is going to be sufficient, uh, but it probably will not work after this tournament, assuming, assuming it works at this tournament. I think the meta can adjust for this pretty easily, but we'll see what... We'll see how that goes first. Um, so as I mentioned, this is kind of an attrition offense. And so I've paired it with what I would consider primarily a resource attrition defense. If you look carefully here at this defense, you're actually only going to see two battle winners, one of which is pretty heavily restricted to being needing to be used by one of my emperors. And then I've got magic charm. So functionally, I have three battle winners. Um... So let's just talk through Gray real quick. So if you've been on Discord a couple of different places, you probably know, know I was a huge fan of a lot of the new Gray cards that came out. Uh, that's kind of what got me started looking at Gray. So all right, guys, I'm like sitting on my legs and it's hurting my crap, so I got to change my position here. Uh, you'll know I was a big fan of Gray, the new Gray stuff that came out. Uh, you'll notice I'm not really playing as much of it as I would have expected, but uh, still really like it. Uh, so Gray is one of the best speed defenses in Scrooge. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, my fault. One of the best speed defenses in Roots. And so you're going to see a lot of speed here. Uh, I decided to play primarily Emperors or Romans. And I found this to be a defense that's going to be effective against Fight by the Numbers or Fight by the Numbers Banding, especially in combination with Pot of Mana, but even without it. Uh, obviously, all of the Emperors and Pilot are Warrior class, which is huge. Uh, so they're not going to be negated by Fight by the Numbers Banding. Um, they also all have really great abilities. So Vittles or Emperor Vitellius can draw a bunch of cards. Uh, Galba can discard a card from the opponent's hand and search the deck for Rome, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, Caligula, block, if blocking another evil room is in play, negate and discard any card in a territory except a character. So you can basically functionally think about that as an artifact or neutral. Uh, opponent must discard an empty card from hand, may ban to a Roman emperor, a Roman except an emperor. Uh, so Augustus actually has one banding target, excuse me, two banding targets. Uh, if blocking, look at opponent's hand and select one good card, one evil card. Opponent must discard one of them. Uh, so pilot's actually really busted. It puts the opponent into some weird situations. Especially if you ban to it from Augustus first. So they have to discard that NT card first. And then you get to look at the hand and discard with pilot, which is pretty sweet. Uh, terrifying Beast can discard a Greek and it's immune to Blue Brigade. May ban to a Roman Emperor. Again, this is something else that Augustus could ban, could ban to and target. So you could go Augustus, Terrifying Beast, some other Emperor. Uh, and then I've got Sabbath Breaker, who's got a standard grade for speed. Um, so this is pretty character heavy on the defense, especially because I kind of tossed in something else here. So I've got my uh, Laban Deal Breaker. You may bounce a multi brigade card in a territory. You may look at the top card of the deck, pick up the one evil card. Uh, so Wheel is, is a multi brigade card that I could bounce with, it, with Laban, which is actually really interesting to try to get more use out of Wheel. But obviously you can also use this defensively to uh, bounce some cards that the opponent has in play. Uh, then I've got Balaam, who can use gray enhancements. Search discard pile for a pale green OT, gray or pale green curse. Prevent special abilities on enhancements, can't be prevented. Um, originally I was playing Rain Becomes Dust in the deck, which is how Balaam kind of ended up here. But realistically, he's probably the best option available. Uh, for this spot. I thought about users of Curious Arts as well, but there's just not, not much you can do that Balaam can't. Uh, and Balaam has that additional ability to, to prevent enhancements, which we really like. Um, I can get away with Balaam because realistically I only have two battle winners anyway, and, and he can play one of them since Balaam's disobedience can't be negated. Uh, Obviously here I've got Magic Charms as well, which is kind of the main, main reason I'm playing some Magicians here. Uh, really nice card. Uh, down here in my Enhancements, so I've got Name and Shares and Horses. So if Interrupt the Battle, draw two cards. If used by a unique character, you may play the next Enhancement. All my Warriors are unique, so not much issue there. 
Balaam's disobedience. Evil characters are immune to human heroes unless an angel's in battle. Can't be negated. Um, and then I've got heavy taxes. Opponent must discard a card from hand, and you may draw a card. If used by an emperor, do this twice, and the battle. Again, battle winner on any of my emperors. This is especially dirty if you tell, go uh, from from Galba, because that would be a total of discarding three cards. Um, also, again, we mentioned that banding chain. You could have if you go Augustus to pilot, and one of them has a name and chariots and horses, and you can play heavy taxes right away. Uh, you're going to end up discarding four, drawing two. Uh, so there's a lot, a lot you can do. Again, it's going to be a little bit harder, a little bit sketchier because of the way the numbers work out here for emperors. But it's not as it's, it's hard to execute it. Rarely do people angel board named chariots and horses in a territory. So I should be able to set that up relatively well. But again, I'm also protecting them from harm with my lost soul. As long as Balaam isn't in play because Balaam is going to break the unity. So I have to be a little bit careful with how I'm, how I'm handling Balaam. And then finally, I've got Mask of Fear, Interrupt the Battle, Draw Three Cards, Play the Next Enhancement. And I also have, actually, Mask of Pride, and then also Mask of Fear. Now, you might ask, why am I playing Mask of Fear? Only two of my characters can play Mask of Fear. One of them prevents the ability. So what, what is going on here? Well, I'm also playing Rome. So Rome is, says your emperors have first strike and can use anti enhancements regardless of evil brigade, except orange. Uh, so all of my emperors can play Mask of Fear. So I've got four additional characters. So I've got a total of six characters that can play it. Uh, that alone wouldn't justify Rome. I'm actually primarily playing Rome for your emperors have first strike. You'll notice all the emperors have 10 attack. Uh, if we go back over to some common standalone heroes, you'll notice that all of them have 10 defense or less. <coughs> uh, Rome is essentially an out, additional out against fight by the number solo characters, which in combination with pot of mana prevents a lot of chump attacks with fight by the numbers characters. Um, I consider this a counter to fight by the numbers characters. And so that is, that is really why Rome has the slot, but because of that additional ability of using other enhancements, it allows me to include mask of fear in an efficient way. Um, this defense is really about resource accumulation and then a little bit of resource attrition to the opponent where, you know, hopefully I get to pull off the heavy taxes combo once during the game. Uh, and then that's enough to kind of like propel me forward and really just force hard choices from my opponent. So awesome. Well, thanks for watching this video. Thanks for uh, paying attention to the things that I put together. Uh, I'll let you know how this Scrooge tournament goes uh, and we will hopefully come back with a win in my return to redemption.